I'll now hand over to uh, Naveed Sitar, uh, who's going to take us beyond um, uh, genotyping uh, into uh, the mysteries of other kinds of omic assays. Naveed, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Rory. Um, you know when UK Biobank is diverse when it includes Glaswegians, so um, I'm just kidding. Because this is Glasgow that, as you all know, and you know, the sun always shines in Glasgow, unlike Edinburgh, Cathy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, that's enough of my... <laughs> okay. So, the importance of wider routine assays. Um, and actually, you all know this. You know, why do we need biomarkers? Well, we need it for diagnosis of many diseases, hemoglobin A1 for diabetes or glucose or troponin levels for MI, for example or liver function tests for things like fatty liver disease. And we have you know, sort of risk scores. We have risk scores for cardiovascular disease, which, we, which is decent, uh, but it could be improved. We have risk scores for diabetes, which is excellent. It doesn't require any biomarkers, actually. Um, uh, not any blood-based biomarkers. We would like better risk scores for things like dementia and NASH. So those are the kind of things we want to move forward to. We also need biomarkers, obviously, to uh, particularly link to genetics, and you're going to probably hear a bit more about that, to identify causal pathways. And of course, if there are biomarkers that help us determine who will or will not better respond to particular therapy, that, that also is an advantage. So that's the kind of reasons, and you all know this, it's not, not rocket science. So this is probably, um, if you haven't seen this, these are the biomarkers that are now due out in the next couple of months, Naomi, I would say. Yeah. So they're all measured. They're with Naomi on her desk, <laughs> and not, all, not physically. So all of these and all 500,000 participants are due out in the next couple of months. So there are markers in, in the liver, which you, you know, the common liver function test we measure in the hospital every day, kidney function measures, including some novel things like cystatin C, which isn't that common in routine practice, but you know, we, it's, it's certainly got some credibility. Uh, bone and joint disease, diabetes, hemoglobin 1 and glucose, cardiovascular, so the lipids, um, there's a nice paper on LPLA that's come out, which uh, Adam and I contributed to, which is, uh, will make this kind of interesting as well. Uh, and, and also linked to cancer, but these are not just cancer linked, you know, sex, hormones, IGF-1, SHBG, maybe linked to a variety of different diseases, but they're all coming out. And you can see the plethora of questions that you may be able to ask once they come out linked to phenotype, to other aspects, and to outcomes. The two that we, we, we wanted to get in first place, which were not there, were the CARIC biomarkers, NT, Pro, BMP, and troponin, and uh, I'm leading an application which we hope will go in September, but there's some logistics to try and measure these also on all 500,000. I think they will be a fantastic addition to, to the platform. I'll just give you one data slide. This is a paper that uh, led by uh, Emanuela D'Angelo and John Dinesh and myself and colleagues uh, with multiple cohorts, but comparing top third, bottom third for, uh, for cardiovascular outcomes uh, and using HDL as kind of the benchmark. So HDL certainly improves coronary heart disease, but if, if you segue that into fatal, non-fatal, well, NT pro BMP is a stronger marker for fatal disease than his HDL, whereas HDL is better for non-fatal disease. And of course, NT pro BMP is a much stronger marker for heart failure, which you would all recognize, and for many of the stroke outcomes because this links to hypertension. So it's something we want to also add, and we'll, we're working towards that. Infectious diseases, the slides that Naomi sent me, um, is an, an application that's gone in um, based on lots of pilot worker, and you can, you know, pilot work, sorry, you can pick your favorite pathogen. I'm not going to go through them, but the application's gone in to, uh, I think I'll show you, it's on the next slide, um, but a whole range of uh, pathogens hopefully will be measured in the next few years. Yeah. Here it is. So the method is based on Luminex, bespoke panel, small sample volume, automatable uh, pa panel. Um, it's based on a collaboration with German Cancer Research Center, and there's, you know, there's been a validation of the assays with the pilots done on uh, 10,000 uh, UK biobank samples. Uh, the timeline, if it gets funded, is three years to measure all half a million people, again, in the UK laboratory, subject to particular funding. So that would also be a fantastic addition to, to, the, to, to the UK biobank. Last two slides then, and then of course we come to the omics, and we're going to hear three talks covering some of these aspects. So there's many more platforms, as you know, out there that measure a whole range of the kind of biological flow of, 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 of uh, data and information. Epigenomics, we're going to hear about. Uh, we're going to hear about, I think, proteomics and metabolomics, or some aspects of these. And then once you've had those three talks, I'll invite the speakers up. We can have some questions uh, from you guys in terms of you know, uh, particular aspects to this as well. So, summary, 
by markers galore, um, more opportunities, but huge challenges ahead. And you know, the challenges are things like, call, you know, for for the UKB and all of us is quality control, giving good, robust measurements. But soon you're going to have lots of established assays coming. Um, the submit, submitted applications, infectious agents, which I've told you about. There's an application being developed in cardiac biomarkers. And then there's opportunity for new assays, which we're looking at. And you, you know, the key thing, there's wide choice. What we're interested in is robustness, coverage, scientific value, and value for money. Those are the key aspects for us. Okay, I'll stop there, and we'll move on to the next talk. Thank you very much.